Okay, this is Dr. Morton, um, recording a video for uh, the 12th of November. And uh, as promised, I'm going to try and demonstrate a stepper motor and uh, also servos uh, in this video. It, it'll be fairly short because that's all I'm going to do is demonstrate those two things. And um, I, I had wanted to demonstrate the stepper being run by the pick, uh, and I, I have that all set up. Well, I had that. I've had that all set up, but I don't have it set up now. Uh, and it's a fair amount of wiring. Plus, I have to have another power supply and all that. So, I, rather than do that, um, uh, I I I think I'm just gonna gonna do the do the servo. Um, okay, so that's kind of where we are. So let me uh, get things set up, and I'll I'll demonstrate them. Um, So, um, just to review, um, the the stepper motor uh, requires uh, it requires a, a, an actual driver, and the reason it requires a driver is uh, let me do a little something here. Okay, so I I didn't cover these slides uh, on Tuesday, but uh, let me go through them now. I'm going to shrink myself down, hopefully. Yeah, so um, so this is a typical stepper motor diagram. Usually there's a permanent magnet rotor, and there usually are uh, uh, two coils separated on either side like this, and wound so that they uh, have an, uh, you know opposite poles on each side. And what that does, that will uh, cause the permanent the permanent magnet rotor to align, and if if you turn if you take a stepper motor's shaft um, and turn it, you you can actually feel these little these little attractions because there's metal in here, and this mag and this this coil this uh, permanent magnet rotor will actually induce an EMF in these coils, and if you turn it fast enough, you'll actually generate uh, a, a voltage with this, um, uh, and so you you can uh, inadvertently uh, put voltage or power back into your circuit. So you, you have to pay attention to that. Uh, if any of you have a 3D printer, you probably notice that if you move your printing head fast enough manually, uh, you'll actually uh, see the uh, the controller circuit um, for the 3D printer uh, turn on because you're generating power. When you turn the shaft by hand, you'll feel a little a, a little detent as it turns, and that's where you're sensing these coils. Now, the the diagram's a little bit misleading because um, you get the impression here that every step would be uh, 90 degrees, and that's not the way it is. These stepper motors are are constructed. So that uh, so that the windings are much more uh, there a lot more of them than this, but there's still two primary windings. Uh, it's just that they're 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 interdigitated and uh, replicated all around, so that when it's all said and done, uh, you have uh, I guess almost 200 of them for the standard um, 1.9 degree stepper motor, where each step is 1.9 degrees. So that's typically how they go. Now um, we'll talk about micro stepping in a minute, but you can you can easily get uh, much better resolution by micro stepping, which means you you have the rotor partly between uh, two of the two of the uh, electromagnets, uh, and whether it's halfway between or whether you divide it up into uh, a quarter steps or how you do that, uh, you can weight the current through the coils. If you have an even amount of current through both coils, then you'd get a half step. If, but if you had, say, one quarter of the current through 1B and, uh, and or, well, 1A and B, and uh, three quarters of the current through 2A and B, then you could get a quarter, you get the needle much closer to the, the, the two magnet instead of the one magnet. And then you could, you could go half, and then you could reverse that and have just one quarter. So you could get, uh, and then, of course, you obviously will have the, the steps, uh, the primary locations uh, pointing straight at the coils where 
only one coil is activated and the other one's not. Uh, and in this, and, and so you can get, and micro stepping, sometimes you can micro step one, one, one half, one, one fourth, one six, one eighth, one sixteenth, one thirty second, one sixty fourth, even finer steps than that. But what you'll find is that uh, as you get into these uh, smaller and smaller steps, that uh, the micro stepping steps aren't really perfect and there they're, they're definite imperfections in them. But if you're only stepping at half steps or full steps, you'll be very accurate or even quarter steps pretty accurate. But, but in these really very, very small steps, unless you have a super expensive uh, controller, um, you, you will see some real problems. Uh, with the, the precision of the very small steps. All right, uh, this is a typical hookup. Uh, you probably recognize that you have a little Arduino uh, here, but uh, we can certainly use our pick exactly the same. There's very little to control on the microprocessor side because between the microprocessor and the stepper motor, you have interspersed here a controller board. And, uh, and this controller board, there's, there's a number of uh, controller ICs made out there, and they... They all have their pros and cons, and they all work in a very similar way. But for smaller steppers, uh, you can uh, there these you can use these stepper boards, and these stepper boards are pretty powerful. Uh, they'll handle several several amps at uh, maybe up to 20, 20, 25, uh, maybe thirty five volts. Uh, and then there are more powerful ones. I know in my pick and place machine, uh, some of my steppers run at seventy volts. And so they, they probably have a little more a beefed up controller board for those. Uh, the standard hookup is a four wire hookup, but sometimes you'll see steppers come in six wire uh, modes because they're center tapped and they do different things. And anyway, I'll show you how you can hook up a six wire uh, stepper with a four wire controller. Um, all right, so the only controls that really have, well, so there's several controls. Let's see, let me go forward here. Oh, sorry. Um, okay, so basically the driver board takes care of, 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 the, of the high voltage. So usually your stepper is going to take, you know, 8, 9, 10, 12 volts, 24 volts. So obviously you're, you're not going to provide that directly from the microprocessor. And, and often at maybe uh, an amp, three quarters of an amp, maybe even uh, more than one amp. Um, I know in resting mode, my... Uh, uh, my skittle sorter has three steppers on it and those three steppers draw a combination uh, when they're holding and not moving they draw more amperage than when they're moving and uh, when they're holding they drive about two and a half amps total for the entire board which probably has maybe maybe 50 milliamps doing other stuff but a full uh, um, yeah, but a full two amps uh, is running the steppers, and they actually get quite warm if you leave them in a holding mode for a long time. They don't get quite as warm when they're moving. Uh, uh, that they, they, I guess, for some reason, they seem to draw a little more current when they're static. Um, so your micro, your micro can have uh, three different uh, controls. Oh, well, four really. Uh, you can you can connect a, an, an enable, and you can turn the steppers on and off. But if you uh, or you can well, you just disable the coils is what you do. But the but the microcontroller, uh, but 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 fortunately the unless you have torque on your uh, on your uh, on your stepper, you won't uh, you won't lose you know you, you won't get it uh, misaligned. But you can, but that way you you won't, it won't be drawing a lot of current and getting warm. Uh, okay, so first there's a, a one bit that sets the direction on most of the controller boards. So you you send a signal to the controller board whether you want to step clockwise or counterclockwise. And then there's another uh, input which is a step, and that 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 usually looks like a, a square wave. So you send one pulse, and that creates one step. Now there are some there's there's some maximum speeds at which you can send these things, and uh, and the pulses have to be of a certain width and everything to make this work fairly well. Uh, and you might have to play around with this a little bit with with a particular uh, stepper controller board to get the the, the motor responding correctly. Uh, if you want it to run continuously, then you can give it steps pretty quickly. But if you 
you give the steps too quickly, then it won't work. So you kind of have to you kind of have to uh, experiment a little, read data sheets, and make sure you're complying with the drive requirements for the board. But but you can generally single step, one step, wait a while, step again, wait a while, step again. But if you want to have it continuously go from one position to another, then you can issue a rapid succession of steps. It's just that you have to make sure you don't send them too fast. Uh, and then you can, if you want, connect the micro-stepping uh, uh, control lines uh, for, the, for your stepper controller, and you can dynamically change uh, your micro stepping, uh, you can dynamically change your, your micro stepping. So you could go from, say, uh, uh, whole steps of 1.9 degrees to half steps, and then maybe you could shift uh, to 16th steps uh, and then back whenever you wanted. Now, I, I didn't, I've never used it that way. I just set the steps uh, automatically, and I did not connect any of the micro stepping uh, uh, lines. Uh, and depending on the controller, there could be. Uh, 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 three lines or even more, depending on how many micro step selections they they uh, give you. So those are the those are the inputs. You also have to make sure. Usually, you have to set the controller board up. There's a pot on the controller board that has to be set to, to as a current limit, so that the the stepper controller won't let the the motor draw any more current than a certain amount. And that's usually a value you can set. Uh, and, that, and setting that's a little tricky. But, uh, and then obviously you can also pick the drive voltage you want to use. Now the drive voltage is going to be, uh, drive voltage and current are going to determine uh, how much torque you have. So you want to make sure when you set this up that your, that the torque in your system, let me put my camera back on, that the torque in the system does not exceed uh, the holding torque. So when your stepper is holding something still, the position steady, if there's uh, if there's pushing uh, on uh, on that uh, on that uh, uh, position, such that it might cause the stepper to slip a couple of steps or a step or two or whatever or more than one step, then you won't know that that happened in your controller, and that can cause you to be completely off in uh, in uh, in in where you are actually positioning the stepper. So, and I'll explain why that is in just a minute. Um, all right. So, and that's because, the reason for that is because, unlike a servo, a stepper does not typically have a shaft encoder. So when you power up a stepper, it doesn't know where it is. Uh, you could still make it step clockwise and counterclockwise, but, uh, but you don't know uh, if it's controlling some, some arm or some robotic, you know, position arm or something. Uh, you don't know what that, where that arm is, and so normally you have to have some way to initialize your stepper. And normally the way we do, normally the way this gets done, it gets done by limit switches. So you actually have a little micro switch, and you typically run the stepper towards the switch. And so when the stepper hits the switch and closes it, or maybe it, maybe you're doing a normally close and it opens the switch, but whatever. When it activates the switch, then uh, that's when the that's when the stepper motor then well that's when the microprocessor knows where the stepper motor's uh, shaft is uh, yeah, at that particular angle. Then it's it's put the uh, whatever the actuator device is at a, at that exact position where the limit switch is is mechanically located. And now if you move in the opposite direction, you just count steps. And you can always know where you are by counting steps and adding when you go in one direction and subtracting when you go in the other direction. And if you do that, you, you should always know where you are and you should stay out of trouble because you should have mapped uh, the limits of your motion so that you don't move further than you're allowed to. And, uh, and you can also always have some extra limit switches to keep you from exceeding certain limits. And then if they get triggered, then you just shut down the function of the stepper. Uh, but you will see on most devices controlled by stepper motors that when they're powered up, they will always uh, uh, do an initializing motion and go hit a limit switch and trigger, uh, show uh, in various ways where they are, how they're actually uh, 
position at that moment. And then the, the software will just co continue to count and keep track of the position by, you know, by just knowing which direction it's stepping and how many steps it's taking. Um, and that's actually pretty easy to do, but generally you want to set it up so that only one function is actually doing the motion so that, so that it knows there's no other motion being generated someplace else in your software and, uh, and failing to be captured in your counters. Uh, because then, obviously, that could really start to screw your, your counts up. And, of course, the other thing is if you uh, have too much torque uh, in, your, in, the, in your mechanical part of your system that causes the stepper to, to slip steps when, you put, when you're supposed to be holding, then that can cause a real problem. And that, that becomes a greater and greater problem with micro-stepping. The, the finer the micro-steps, the less holding torque there is. And... Uh, and when you have very little holding torque, it doesn't take much to skip a step. And then that will mess your count up, and then your precision really goes to pot very quickly after that. You can occasionally reinitialize if you want to. And I suppose, uh, I'm sure there are steppers that have built-in shaft encoders that tell you continuously where you are. So that's also a possibility. Okay. Um, Let's see. Um, yeah, let me go through these other considerations sort of quickly. So how much torque and how much holding torque are key design parameters? So obviously, this determines the voltage and the current you're going to have to run your stepper or it may force you to upsize to a bigger stepper motor. And at, at some point, that may force you to upsize to a more powerful uh, stepper controller. Um, but these little stepper controllers can handle some pretty, some pretty powerful steppers. So... Um, you, uh, you also have to think about, uh, again, the micro-stepping. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to make it all the way up here. Let's go back. These, these, uh, these micro-stepping can definitely give you improved accuracy up to a point, but as I said, at some point uh, you get into trouble with, because of the decrease in the torque, and you also get into trouble because um, those mini-steps are not really that precise. Okay, um, so as I said, the standard steppers give you, you know, you can buy more expensive ones, but typical, typical, normal, you know, uh, NEMA 17 type stepper is going to give you uh, 1.8 degrees per, per, per step or about 200, uh, well, 200 steps per 360 degrees. Um, okay, so here's a setup. You can, uh, so this is a six wire motor, and you can see here there are six wires, yes, but two of them are center taps, and they just uh, leave them out of the circuit, and then they still control them by putting the four wires uh, for the two coils connected to the two different uh, poles of your uh, stepper controller. So most stepper controllers have, have four outputs, and they, they energize your two coils, and even if you get the up, the connections backwards, then that just changes how the stepper motor responds to each step. If they're backwards, it'll go the opposite direction, basically. So it, that's not too big of a problem. Okay, um, let's see. I think that's it. I think that's really all I wanted to talk about here for stepper motors. Um, now let me do a little bit of a demonstration. Okay, so I'm going to pop this up here. Okay, that's good. And then, uh, so, um, okay, I didn't want to do this. Uh, let me let me get rid of these. Okay, now, um, so let me first do the stepper. And so I'm going to pop this up. Okay, so I kind of got a jumble of things here. So let me, I'm going to change, I'm going to, pop this in so we can see a little bit here okay so um, let me add some light to the, to the picture like that okay so so here's my micro we're going to come back to that and here's a couple of, there's a servo uh, typical servo motor uh, it they, they almost all have this three wire interface servo power common ground signal and the signal the the uh, 
the power is usually the center connector and and they're usually coated brown red orange or sometimes some other colors here's another one same thing uh, you can see this one the second one's a lot smaller uh, and main difference is just the torque really um, all right and then so we'll do that and we'll do that in a minute if we have time i may not i may not take the time to do that so here's here's the stepper controller i've been using um and uh this is uh a let's see i should have put this put that in there so here's the uh here's the picture of the the driver i'm using although this is slightly different color slightly different configuration but it's the same chip it's the a4988 and this is a pretty inexpensive, uh, maybe a dollar or two dollars a piece on eBay. And um, so that's really a nice feature. And um, you do have, uh, you do have uh, uh, 16 pins you have to contend with. Four you have to connect to the stepper. You have to connect power and you need a cap near the driver. Uh, so, power, so motor power and ground. And that's usually 8 to 35 volts. And then, um, then you need your logic supply, three to five and a half volts. Uh, and they need to have a common ground, of course. And then the micro drives your direction and step. And then uh, you can also drive your, your uh, micro step one, two, and threes. Uh, you, you have the option for sleep and reset and enables. Those are ways, to, that, those are ways the reset it sort of is a way to, to get it reinitialized. Uh, Enable is uh, uh, can uh, leave it in position, but shut off the power and some other things. So you have some power constraints here. Uh, remember that when it's when you're not moving it, it has the coils are still energized, drawing a fair amount of current to provide it sufficient torque to hold it in its in its position. And so uh, so it does draw it, it does draw a fair amount of current even when it's just holding position. So, so you in this enable sleep uh, and sleep can give you uh, some ability to control with the power usage and in, in holding uh, with holding torque. Um, okay, so that's that's the setup. Um, there can be some pretty good voltage spikes, and this this talks about uh, uh, that. That's why you need these. Uh, that's why you need these. This uh, this cap right here. And it needs to be a, a low ESR ceramic cap. So, or well, actually, the, that's why you need this external cap. And it should be at least 47 micros um, to prevent these spikes. All right. Well, anyway, if you're running at low power, uh, low voltage, it's not as critical. All right. And you can you can drive four, six, and eight wire stepper motors. Uh, and there's ways of explaining that if you need to do that uh, I, I mentioned the six the six you just uh, you don't you, you don't connect the center taps all right um, sorry I wanted uh, stupid thing all right so let me let me see if I can get uh, this one hooked up and run it here okay so here we are set up with um, move the camera around so you can see me all right we are set up we have a um, we have a power supply, and I'll show you the. So it's right now drawing a, a 31, a 3, 310 mi, uh, milliamps. You can see that. Uh, no, you can't. Now you can see it at 11 and a half volts. And I could, I could um, make this. We'll make this 12 volts. So, so th 320 milliamps, and that's in that's in a quiescent position. Okay, now I'll show it so you can see me. Uh, um, okay. Now, uh, and I may I may come in a little bit so we can see. Oops, crap! Dang it! Uh, man, it's gonna it's not gonna work now. Okay, stupid thing. The on-off switch on that, 
the document camera is totally in the wrong place. It's so convenient that if you pick up the document camera, you always shut it off. Okay, and here we go. All right, now, maybe I'll expand this all the way and I'll, and I'll put my camera on top of it somewhere here. Uh, yeah, you can go here for now. All right. Okay, looks good. All right, so now you can see. So here's the stepper motor right here. And uh, you can see that it, it does, have, in fact, have six wires. Uh, it has two brown wires, and then it has a blue, a yellow, uh, a red, and a white. The blue, the yellow, the red, and the white are the... Uh, are, are the uh, they are the the main windings and the center taps are the two browns so normally you can just you can just ignore the center taps and that'll work fine and that's that's really the the configuration that we have here where you can see the center tap wires are just left loose out here they're not really used and in a six wire in a typical six wire interface that's that's how you would do it all right um so let me get rid of that all right so now, um, and I, this may be, oh, damn it, I killed it again. Cannot believe I did that. That's just so terrible. Okay. All right, so there we go. Now it's, now it's, now what I want you to notice, um, I may have to put a piece of tape. So this is a little separate controller board because I, I, the mic, this, so this is, this has the driver chip. This is a totally different driver chip. And you can feel this one's actually getting warm because a third of an amp's going through it continuously now. Now, uh, if I have it set up in single step mode, so now you can see if I, if, every time I push the button, you can see that the the motor turns one step, and that's it should be about a 1.8 uh, uh, degree step. Now I I should be able to change the size of the step because this changes the micro step, and you can also see. Uh, these lights indicate how the how the uh, how the windings are being energized, and they're they're shuffled around. They're, again, there's just two windings, but they have poles on both sides, and the windings get get reversed. Or, uh, well, they're the way these windings work. They they're set up to push it in a given direction. Now, if we if we flip the uh, direction switch, which is this switch, I believe, then you can see it go in the other direction. And then if I s flip it from uh, push button mode or single step to continuous step, now you can see it's rotating. And I have a little potentiometer here that can change the speed of the rotation so that it can go very slow, can go pretty fast. And then I can change it, the micro stepping. Here, here, we're, here we're doing, uh, we're, we're taking uh, smaller steps. And here we're taking, well, I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe that just changes the speed. I'm not sure if this is micro-stepping or not. Uh, but anyway, uh, so, yeah, I think it is because you can see here we, we have very fine little steps. And I think if we put it in continuous, I think these are, now let's change that. Yeah. So you can see the steps here are smaller, so we're micro-stepping it. And notice the lights don't have the same intensity. So that's the micro step. Or maybe, and I'm a little confused. Well, anyway, uh, but, but that's how it works. So you can see, but when you power it up, stepper has no idea where it is. You can, you can control, so you can single step it. You can change the direction, make it go the other way. But what you can't do is figure out where it is without some sort of external limit switch to tell you. So that's that's partly how that works. Okay, I think I'm gonna, in the interest of time, I let's. I, I mean, I'm gonna see if I can set the servo up. I'm not gonna promise or guarantee anything here. So let me pause this and I'll see if I can get the servo set up. Okay, so here's the servo running. This routine is a little spastic, but it's just driving the servo back and forth basically, and. Uh, 
anyway, that's what it's doing. And you can control it a little bit with the pot. The pot basically controls one of the ends so it changes how much it rotates. So if I put it all the way, if I put it all the way here, it's it's not going to rotate much because it's changing one of the ends. And then if I make it make it go kind of its full distance, then then you can see. Uh, let's see. I don't know if I got that right. But anyway, so now you can see it's moving uh, pretty much most of its rotation. Not quite. It's moving about well about a hundred degrees. Let's see if I can get it to move. Now it's moving almost 180. So anyway, and and I'm driving. I'm the power I'm driving to it. I'm driving. I'm driving from a from the uh, from the little microcontroller. So it, it doesn't have an excessive amount of power. Anyway, uh, we'll talk about uh, you know if you want to if you want to use a servo you can and and uh, I I did go over. Remember. The servo is controlled with a PWM signal. So the microprocessor is generating a PWM signal with a nominal pulse width of 20 milliseconds. And, it, and it, as it varies, the, the actual uh, duty cycle from about 5% to 10%, with center being at 7.5%, this is the kind of motion you get. There's not a tremendous amount of torque with these. I mean, there is some, obviously. You know, it, it's, not, it's not nothing. But it's um, it's anyway okay. So we'll we'll quit with this, and um, I'll go ahead and post the video.